Hey guys, welcome back to the 14th episode of the Wash Unifrology Renal Path series. Um, I'm going to do a talk on my own. Unfortunately, Dr. Gott um, was unavailable to record something this month due to the winter holidays, but we will be back in January with some cases, with some fellows, and maybe even some attendings. So I'm going to take this opportunity to record an episode, um, kind of a kidney pathology 101. These are things that I wish I knew and understood on the first day of renal fellowship because reading kidney biopsies is hard. And full disclosure, I am not a renal pathologist, but uh, I think I have read enough biopsies and been to enough biopsy conferences that I hopefully can teach you something that you guys know. So with that, let's get started. Um, we have our sponsors again. Big shout out to the AJKD blog. Please uh, check out their website and be on the lookout in February or so of 2017, which is only a month away. Neff Madness 2017 is coming. It's going to be a great time. We hope to have lots of fellow participation. Um, please make a bracket and learn something along the way. So what I'm going to start with here is uh, the general approach to light microscopy. Uh, we all know that when we look at a kidney biopsy, we're looking at certain structures, uh, the glomerulus, the tubule, the interstitium, and the vessel. And just like when we when we put a patient's AKI into a box of pre-renal, post-renal, or intrinsic AKI. If it's intrinsic AKI, we then try to determine what compartment of the kidney is involved. If it's glomerular, we look for blood and protein in the urine. If it's tubular, we sometimes can find granular casts, which uh, su suggest ATN. If it's interstitial, sometimes we can see white blood cells or white blood cell casts. And, you know, vascular disease is, is a tricky one, really doesn't show anything. And when we don't know what is going on or we are unable to find out what's going on by examining the urine sediment, or if we want to confirm the diagnosis, we do the kidney biopsy. And when you do the kidney biopsy, you want to evaluate each of these structures independently. Um, the other part of it is you look at the different stains on the kidney biopsy, and that's really what we're going to focus on with this lecture is what are the different stains? What are they used for? When you look at an H&E, what should you be commenting on? When you look at a silver, what should you be commenting on? So that's really going to be the focus of this talk is evaluating how to, how to look at the trichrome, the H&E, the PS, and the silver stain. So again, just to get your head around the kidney biopsy, try as you go through the biopsy to evaluate each of these structures one by one. The glomerulus, the vessel, the interstitium, or the tubules. And when we, uh, sorry, let me get my mouse working again. Apologize. Just gonna... When you do a um, biopsy and you look at the different stains, you have an H&E, that's this one up here on the top left. You have a PAS, which is up there on the top right, a silver, bottom left, and a low power trichrome, bottom right. The trichrome is usually looked at at low power. We'll talk a little bit more about why that is the case. So let's start with H&E. The H&E is hematoxylin and eosin stain. And the colors that the H&E stains are pink and blue. Uh, the basophilic structures, such as basophils or also lymphocytes will stain blue or I should say the nuclei of cells will stain blue and then there are going to be eosinophilic structures that stain pink um, obviously eosinophils would stain pink and so when you think about the different ways these different cells would stain basophils are blue eosinophils are kind of pink the H&E stain is used to evaluate the cells now you can see a lot of other different things within it but really, when you make a comment about things like mesangial hypercellularity or the type of cell infiltrating the tubular interstitium in AIN, you want to really be looking at the H&E stain. What you don't want to use the H&E stain for is to do things like evaluate the thickness of the basement membrane. We'll talk about the two stains that are used for that a little bit later on. Here's an example of an H&E. Um, and again, a full disclaimer here, every institution stains their tissue a little bit differently. So, you know, when you look at an H&E stain here versus at my training center at Rush 
or wherever you are um, a fellow or a resident at. Um, it may not look exactly like this, but for the most part, the pink and blue should stand out. And so here's a normal kidney tissue. Uh, you can see here in this kidney biopsy, we have one, two glomeruli, you have several um, tubules, and you have the interstitium in between. You can see the tubular cells in the basement membrane. You can see the mesangial cells here in the glomeruli. You can see how those stain nice and basophilic. I'm going to give you an example of a disease. Look at it for a little bit. Uh, I'm not going to tell you what it is. Hopefully as you're watching you can kind of see that this is abnormal. So there are a lot of different cells within the glomerulus that are abnormal. Uh, first of all, uh, what hopefully is most striking is that the basement membranes are, or sorry, that the capillary loops, I apologize if I misspoke, the capillary loops are closed. You don't see open spaces. You can see some mesangial cells. Okay, here's some mesangial cells. But you also see several cells within the glomerulus that are abnormal. And I'm trying to point to them here with my mouse. These multi-lobed nuclei, or polymorphic nuclei cells. So those are neutrophils. So neutrophils infiltrating the glomerulus is very suggestive of um, an infection-associated glomerular nephritis. So that's, again, when you are trying to comment on the types of cells that you're looking at, um, it's best seen on the h and &E. The PAS is next. Now this is the stain that I think most people get confused with the h and &E, or they'll get the PAS confused with the h and &E, or vice versa. They do look similar, but here's a couple tricks to tell them apart. The PAS stains bright purple and pink. Instead of the blue and the pink, it's bright purple and pink. And it identifies different structures. It identifies glycoproteins and proteoglycans in the tissue. So in the kidney tissue, uh, that, is most that is most strong staining within the basement membrane. The tubular basement membrane are also the capillary loops. The tubular brush border and also Bowman's capsule, which kind of surrounds the glomerulus. Those will stain kind of dark. Uh, and I think that is the key to telling the PAS from the h and &E. So here is a PAS. Uh, and I'm going to show them to you back to back in, in the next page. A normal glomerulus here. You can still see cells, all right? It's not like you can't see cells in the PAS. And you could even sometimes comment on the cellularity. But what you see here that's very different from the h and &E is the intense staining of the rim of Bowman's capsule here. You can see the capillary loops and the basement membrane within the glomerulus much stronger. You can see the tubular basement membranes again much stronger here. And you can see this nice brush border within the tubular epithelium as well. So that's I think the key to differentiating the PS from the h and &E, is that you're able to see that basement membrane and the brush border so clearly. Here they are back to back so that you can kind of get an example. Again, it's not that you can't comment on cellularity with the PAS, but it's much easier on the H and E, which is on the left hand side here, to comment on the types of cells that you're dealing with. And on the PAS you can again appreciate how nice this tubular brush border appears, whereas on the H and E side you don't see that. Okay? It is very easy to get these confused, don't get me wrong. It's easy when you look at them side to side like this, but when the slide is just put up on the monitor in front of you, um, your brain starts to play tricks on you. You're not alone. Um, here, here's some tubular uh, cells within the h and &E versus the PAS. So this would be useful in a case of, say, interstitial nephritis. If you were looking for eosinophils within the tubular interstitium, you would be able to see them. Uh, on this particular image you don't see eosinophils but you can appreciate the different types of cells whereas uh, on the right hand side the PAS it's again harder to really tell what kind of cells you're dealing with. The trichrome is next it's called trichrome because it's three colors red which stains muscle, blue which stains for collagen and brown which kind of stains for nuclei. So oftentimes in the trichrome you'll see kind of like a red piece of tissue just sitting there um, that's just a little bit of skeletal tissue that is obtained on the way to the kidney biopsy. Hopefully it's skeletal tissue and not some other organ. Um, the blue is what stains collagen and that's really important because usually the trichrome in the kidney biopsy at least is most used for evaluating the degree of chronic fibrosis. So if you have a lot of irreversible chronic disease 
there will be a lot of fibrosis, there will be a lot of collagen, and there will be a lot of blue. So here is a normal trichrome. Again, this is usually the power at which you look at the trichrome. There are certain instances where you're going to want to look at a high power trichrome of glomeruli if you're looking for particular um, unusual things like fibrin, for example. But for the most part, uh, I find the trichrome to be most useful in looking at low power and just getting a sense for what is going on. This might be the first image that you see. And even though you can't make the diagnosis and you can't tell what is going on, there are a lot of things that can be gleaned from this tissue. First of all, you see that this is a nice core of kidney. You have plenty of glomeruli, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, at least here on this stain. Um, you have a nice vessel uh, here and you have a lot of tubular interstitium to look at. And the important thing to note is that there are lots of tubules. They're tightly packed together. They're back to back. There's not a lot of space in between the tubules to suggest interstitial fibrosis. So this looks quite healthy. I hope my kidney looks like that. Um, here is another example of a trichrome. Again, it looks a little different from the last one. Again, that just varies from institution to institution. Some trichromes uh, at, um, in different places will stain more of the blue, some will stain more of the red, and it really depends. Again, um, you can, what you can appreciate here is that there's two cores, both of kidney tissue, several glomeruli, um, lots of tubules back to back. There's some patchy areas, you know, like right here where there's a little bit of fibrosis, there's a little bit of fibrosis here. But for the most part, this looks pretty good. Contrast that with this image, okay, and this would be an example of a low power trichrome where there's a lot of chronic fibrosis. So if you look at this whole tissue, there's some space where there's tubules, for example, kind of right here in the middle of this core, but there's a lot of space in between the tubules. That blue is fibrosis of the interstitium, and there's you know, large spaces here and here where there's no tubules, just completely replaced by fib uh, fibrotic tissue. So this would be a case of severe interstitial fibrosis, which usually when, when you see the word severe interstitial fibrosis, that usually implies that there's more than 50% of the tissue is fibrosed. We're gonna end on the silver stain, which is often also called the Jones stain, named after Dr. Jones, who kind of in dis invented the stain in the 20s. This stain is very distinctive. It is black. Um, it stains reticular fibers such as collagen and is very similar to the PAS stain. Um, what the silver stain is most used for in kidney biopsies is to evaluate the basement membrane for integrity. If you have a rupture of the basement membrane, you might see a split or a break. If you have deposits within the basement membrane, those deposits won't stain and so you will be left with holes. Sometimes if you have a bunch of massive epithelial deposits, you might see spikes, you might see double contours. Um, so diseases like membranous and MPGN and RPGN, um, RPGN states I should say, say um, the, the silver can be really helpful. Um, the silver, I think another hidden gem for the silver is that it's really useful in nodular disease. And when you have nodular glomerular sclerosis, for the most part, that's almost always diabetic nephropathy, and that nodule is a chemosteel Wilson nodule. However, there are other nodular diseases. Amyloidosis, for example, is a great example, or any other type of deposition disease. Or, or there's also idiopathic nodular glomerular sclerosis, which is seen in um, men who are heavy smokers. So in those um, diseases, the silver can be useful to know if that nodule is made up of collagen or if it's made up of some other proteinaceous material, such as amyloid. So if you had a nodule, nodular glomerular sclerosis, where you saw nodules on the H&E and the PAS, but then you went to the silver and the nodules were absent, and instead of a nodule you saw like a clear area, that would be suggestive that that nodular area is not made up of collagen and is instead made up of something uh, like a protein as would be seen in a disease like amyloid. Here's a normal silver stain. I think it's one of the prettiest, um, prettiest stains to look at. 
Uh, again, you don't see cells, okay? So don't ever look at a silver and say, well, there's some mesangial hypercellularity here. No, because there's no cells. Uh, you don't see cells, uh, they don't stain. Um, but you can uh, comment on the integrity of the basement membrane, uh, whether or not you see ruptures, splits, spikes, holes, uh, things like that. So here's an example of a disease where you would see this ragged uh, basement membrane. And if you look really closely, again, this is subtle, you can see these protrusions, which are spikes. You can see some areas which kind of look moth-eaten. Here's a nice area. You see all these spikes down here at about 5 o'clock or so. This is, this is membranous nephropathy, and this is uh, what it would look like on the silver stain. Um, not all the time will you see this in membranous, but if you do see it, it's kind of classic. Just for historical purpose, this is the original um, original description of the Jones stain by Dr. Jones uh, from the 50s, and uh, he shows these beautiful club or mushroom-shaped protrusions. They're silver positive. Between these projections is a silver negative hyaline material, which is in droplet form. So that silver negative material are the immune complexes, and that club-shaped appearance is actually the normal basement membrane. So that kind of wraps it up for light. There's also IF. Don't forget that that's usually what comes next is IF, it stains for immune complexes. Um, when you look at IF, you want to describe the pattern that you see. Obviously, there's positive and negative, but if it's positive, you want to describe is it granular, linear, nodular, and so forth, and for what uh, immune complex is it. So start with positive or negative and then go from there. Lastly is EM, and again, if you want a more intense orientation on EM, which is, again, one of the harder things in the kidney biopsy, please refer to my first uh, episode where I discuss minimal change disease. Um, and you can see um, my um, Joe walking through the fellow with EM. But in general, when you look at an EM, you want to first orient yourself to where you are, because uh, if you don't know what you're looking at and where you are, you're going to be confused. So this area here is the capillary loop, okay? And this is a big red blood cell within the capillary loop. This area here is the fenestrated endothelium. This is obviously the basement membrane itself. And these on the outside are the foot processes of the epithelial podocyte. So this is the blood space. This is the urine space. Uh, and from there, you can kind of comment on if you see deposits, you can comment on the amount of effacement in the foot process and so forth. This is a normal EM. All right, that about wraps it up. I hope you guys found this useful. Again, I apologize for the lack of cases, but we are going to be bringing back a lot more. Uh, and please stay tuned. Please follow uh, me on Twitter at Maximal Change. Please uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Just search Wash U Nephrology. And please email me with suggestions if you have anything that you'd like to hear about. Appreciate your time. See you guys in the new year.